What's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Before we jump right into today's highly requested video, I just wanted to remind you guys there is less than 48 hours left to grab the plant-based bundle. Essentially, you'll be getting 150 plus plant-based eBooks, courses, guides, and other content for a one-time payment of $50. Plus, you get automatically entered to win your choice between a $500 Vitamix Blender and a Nama J2 Juicer when you simply purchase through our link in the description of this video. There's over $3,900 worth of content in this bundle, so be sure to click the link below. Good morning, you guys. So I am just scrolling online, trying to find the kids some new arts and crafts supplies because I realized all of our crayons are broken. I thought today's video might be interesting to just talk about being a crunchy mama in the modern world. So I know we feel a lot of pressure, especially on social media, to be all in with everything we do. We have to be 100% makeup free. We have to be 100% in on homeschool, making things from scratch, and 100% with cloth diapering, which I really am going to dive in with you guys today. I've gotten tons of questions about cloth diapering. I think we need to be a little bit more relaxed with our approach and give ourselves a little bit of grace and realize that Parenting is not something that we become perfect at by any stretch of the imagination because every time we do master something, our kids change and evolve. So we are forced to change and course correct as well. So I think it's super important to know that if you are on this crunchy mama journey like me, then it doesn't have to be a 100% all in approach. But I am going to be sharing a lot of the things that I've picked up on over the years, where I've really excelled and where I'm okay not being 100% all in. So we are diving head deep into a homeschool. This summer we're just kind of getting our feet wet, so I'm not really going into any type of curriculum yet. I'm still exploring my options, but we're just getting really creative and we're putting a heavy emphasis on two areas, literature and nature. So we've been frequenting the library. We go at least once a week. We're doing this challenge called a thousand books before kindergarten and we are well on our way. So it's been so much fun. And then on the other side, nature, we are such an outdoorsy bunch. The kids love catching lizards and frogs and identifying different flowers and plants and snakes, all the wildlife that we see. We are immersed in the forest here. We've seen bobcats, armadillos, coyotes, all literally right in our front yard. We see different frogs, snakes, and lizards, and every time Max is asking me to identify it, and we end up learning a whole bunch of new information every time we see a new critter. We just saw this really cool caterpillar. It crawled up in the corner of our door, and we couldn't reach him so the next day we came to check on him again and he had built a cocoon so we are anxiously awaiting his arrival into this world as a beautiful butterfly it's been so much fun just getting to be out in nature and learning things in a very fluid way and we're really focusing on being lifelong learners so that means Dusty and I are always along for the ride with our kids and sometimes we have to say I don't know and then we get the opportunity to learn together we're still gonna keep this free-spirited wild at heart approach to it as well because we're having so much fun like i said just focusing on literature and nature somebody on my instagram stories saw Liv playing with this grover and she said my heart skipped because i had that exact same grover growing up and i lost it her grandpa went back to look for it could not find it and then one day he came home and he said he found it but she was so little but she still knew it was a brand new grover it wasn't the same one but I had to tell her this was actually my Grover growing up, so this is an original from like the 80s. Max, what do you think it is? Mm, I know. Earl, did you do this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's an early anniversary present. Is it a Lang Lang? Yeah. Wow, a Lang Lang? Throwback to wow. Costa Rica. I can't believe it. So we had a love treat back in Nebraska when we got married. We had a Japanese maple, which is our favorite tree, but you can't grow them here in Florida. So this is a Lang Lang tree. It's the smell they used for Chanel number no. five. We absolutely love this tree. We find them in Costa Rica. Can't wait to put this in the ground. So you guys know I'm very crunchy when it comes to cooking my beans from dry. We've got chickpeas soaking here. Actually, just a couple days ago, I soaked some red lentils and made my very own tofu from scratch. So soy free gonna share it with you guys right now. I think you'll really enjoy it and find it an easy recipe that you can make from scratch at home yourself. 
I actually got a DM from one of our followers who requested a soy-free homemade tofu recipe and I decided red lentil tofu didn't sound half bad. It is super, super high in protein and iron, lots of B vitamins. It is loaded with so much nutrition. We aren't totally against soy, but from time to time, it is nice to be able to empower yourself and make things from scratch on your own at home. All you have to do is take one cup of red lentils, soak them in a bowl of water overnight, and then the next day, drain and rinse them, and then boil two cups of water. Put your drained, rinsed lentils into a bowl, add the two cups of boiling water, and then let it set for about 20 minutes until it cools a little bit, then blend it. When you put your lentils in the blender, add about a half tablespoon of salt. After we blend it, we're gonna put it back in a pot on the stove top and simmer it while whisking it continuously for about 10 minutes. You're going to see it completely transform before your eyes. It's gonna go from a liquid into a very, very creamy consistency that's thicker and thicker, almost like pudding. After that, we're going to put it into a glass dish, let it set and cool at room temperature for another 20 minutes, 30 minutes or so, at which point once it's cooled, cover it, pop it in the refrigerator overnight so you can eat it straight out of the refrigerator just by cubing it or what I like to do is once it's cubed, put it on a parchment sheet similar to what we would do with our store-bought tofu and I will just drizzle it with coconut aminos or regular aminos or maybe just like salt, pepper and curry powder and then pop it in the oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about 10 minutes at which point you'll take it out, mix it around, give it a good toss pop it back in for another five to seven minutes. It'll get crispy and golden on the edges and it's firm on the outside and soft on the inside and it's such a good texture. It really, I think, holds the flavor better than soy tofu. So you guys will have to experiment for yourselves. If you guys want the full written recipe, this will be in our Eat, Move, Rest meal and recipe planner app very soon, if not already. So be sure to check it out. Dusty dug out all of my fun little summertime freezer things. We've got all these like water bottle things. I'm gonna make some fun ice cubes for our drinks, like fruity ones or like ginger shots. And the fun thing that Max is requesting right now is some popsicles. So I have a really good recipe. It's actually gonna go in our cookbook. These are pink passion pops. Even at Whole Foods, I'm very disappointed with the frozen section for kids because all the popsicles contain refined sugars and like juice from concentrate. So it's very easy to make them taste good at home with one simple ingredient that I put in like all of our smoothies to make them extra tart and sweet, and that is passion fruit. So we have fresh passion fruit that I picked off the vine a couple weeks ago out back, but it's really easy to buy it frozen too. Even though they look kind of shriveled and rotten, this is a good sign because they're gonna be really, really sweet and yummy inside. So basically I'm just gonna put in frozen bananas, strawberries, passion fruit, a little pink pitaya for color, and then a little bit of Sun Warrior vanilla protein and coconut water. It is the best combo. And then to give it a little boost of energizing omega-3s, I like to add in chia seeds. It also helps to just like hold it together and thicken up really good. All right, you guys, so since cloth diapering is kind of one of those tasks that feels very daunting to tackle if you're a newbie, I thought this would be a good topic to cover in a sit down style with you guys. So I did not cloth diaper with Max and I wish that I would have because I've been doing it with Liv and it's so rewarding and not nearly as taxing or difficult as I thought it would be. So when it comes to cloth diapering, I would say my biggest recipe for success is to just simply make sure that you are armed with all of the proper materials and then just take the plunge, dive in head first and learn as you go. So we are all folded up. These are my Charlie Banana cloth diapers. There are even more in a laundry pile getting ready to get tossed in the wash, but this is for the next day. I have tried several different types and always land back on Charlie Banana. Just to give you guys a brief overview of Charlie Banana diapers, I love them so much because they have beautiful colors and they also have a lot of fun new designs. They just went through a massive rebrand, so there's a lot of cool things to check out at Charlie Banana. The outer shell is waterproof and leak proof if you put the diaper on the right way, which I'll get into. 
and inside this is a super soft fleece lining and it's all Ocotex certified so there are no scary chemicals or anything that could harm your baby. This insert here is a microfiber with fleece on the back. It's ridiculously absorbent and for overnight diapering you can even double up on the inserts just to make sure especially if you are breastfeeding throughout the night and your baby is wetting a lot then you'll want to make sure and double up on the inserts so you're not getting any leaking. I have one that I'll show you here up close and I even have my cute adorable little model here who I'm going to diaper for you guys. So I love this button snap feature because the diapers are designed to grow with your baby. This is for adjusting the waistline as your baby grows and then as far as avoiding leaks along the legs there are these great adjustable straps that are just inside the pockets here on either side. And they work essentially just like a bra strap. There are small, medium, and large sizes here to grow with your baby. If you're getting any leakage, it's likely that this is where you need to make your adjustments. And the little cotton liners were the biggest game changer for me. This makes it very easy to dispose of any solid waste without having too much residual on the diaper itself. So I lay the liner out on the diaper like that. Put our little baby model here. And then just go ahead and snap to the right size. Nice and snug. No leakage around the thighs. And you don't have to worry about it being uncomfortable because they are super soft edge to edge. There isn't anything scrapey or uncomfortable with Charlie Banana diapers. Charlie Banana's website has an FAQ page so you can figure out if you're ever needing to troubleshoot or if you're not sure how to do something exactly the right way. They have all of the details right there for you. There's a website called Fluff Love University that you can go to when it comes time to wash your diapers properly and figure out what kind of detergent and how to wash whether you have a regular washing machine or an HE high efficiency unit. So it is going to vary a little bit as well as your water quality and you don't wanna to get too brainy about this stuff, but if you have hard water, your diapers can get buildup in them. So the detergent will kind of stick to the grime rather than removing it over time. So then you might end up having to do what is called stripping your diapers, which you shouldn't honestly have to do if you are cloth diapering appropriately. So the biggest help for me was to go to that website to figure out exactly what to do and how to use. If you can't find exactly what you need on Charlie Banana's website, that's a good second bet to get all of your information figured out. Things you're going to need, your cloth diapers, your inserts. So I recommend having 21 diapers, seven to use, seven to wash, seven to fold. You don't have to put them in a wet pail. All that you need to do is put them in a wet bag. So this is waterproof and you can literally just like hang it in a closet or on the back of a door. And anytime Liv has a soiled diaper, I just pop the insert out, place it like that, fold the diaper up and drop it in the bag. I'll get through my diapers in about a day, day and a half, and then I'll do a load of laundry. So I usually am doing a load of diaper laundry every other day. If you find that you are washing every other day like I am, then you could get away with 14, but at least start with that amount. So you'll want that. And then this is the type of bag that I keep in my backpack. So when we are out at the beach and she wets, then I can take the insert out pop it in like this. This is all nice and sealed and I can either hook it on my backpack or I have a separate compartment in my backpack that I usually keep these in. When we get home, the first thing I can do is grab it out, add it to my bag and then do a load of wash that way. So it's good to have these for on the go. You can also get cloth wipes from Charlie Banana. So I just got a brand new fresh set of these and you can use them wet or dry. So you can wipe dry with this or if it's a messy cleanup, you can wet them with water and then use them. And these go right into the bag along with your cloth diapers and you can do that all, all of that laundry together all at the same time. There are tons of homemade diaper wipe 
sprays that you can make. You can simply use Dr. Bronner's and add it with water and shake it and mix it. That's what I've got here. It's a lavender scent. It's very gentle and safe. And then this was definitely a major game changer for me. These are little cotton liners that go right inside the diaper. So you're gonna put this inside your diaper like this and put it on as usual. And this is to catch solids. So this was a game changer for me because if you have a little one who has very soft poopies from time to time, then you can imagine how difficult it is to clean them. So this catches all of the solids. You can very easily just plop that and dispose of it. If you have a major blowout, it might also be helpful to get some kind of attachment, whether it's a shower head hose attachment that you can take off of the shower to rinse any debris down the drain, or better yet, what we have is a bidet. So it's actually a hose attachment hooked onto the side of our toilet. I would say I maybe have to use the sprayer attachment on the toilet once every couple of weeks, and that's it. Otherwise, those liners catch everything. First and foremost, when you get a brand new set of cloth diapers, it's really important that you go through about five wash cycles with those diapers before you start using them because they're not going to be absorbent yet. If you've ever gotten a new t-shirt or a towel even and you happen to get water on it, you'll notice that the water kind of beads and rolls off. So you kind of have to break them in a little bit. Rather than just running them through five cycles all by themselves, you can easily just toss them in for a quick wash wash with some other light loads and get them washed and ready to use that way. So when it comes time to wash my soiled diapers, I'll pop them in the washer and do a speed cycle. It only lasts about 15 minutes and I will do it on the coldest setting. So it just gets rid of any stains and gets them moistened up and ready for their heavy wash. Next, I will do the heavy duty setting or if you have a sanitary setting, you can use that. So I'll do heavy duty on the highest heat so that's gonna do the longest time at the highest temperature. So in order to preserve the integrity of this shell that's waterproof, you'll want to make sure not to dry on the highest heat. I usually do medium for 60 minutes, and then I grab them out and just make sure feeling the inserts. If they're damp, you might run into issues, so you never wanna put an insert back in and get this diaper ready if there is any dampness. So I'll go 60 minutes at medium heat, not high heat. And then from there, if they need it, I'll tumble them for another 20 minutes at low heat. But usually the 60 minutes at medium does it. If you really wanna prolong the life of your diapers, then it can be very beneficial to hang dry them. So I have this bamboo drying rack that I got on Amazon. I can link it below. And I love it because it's super, super hot. The sun is really intense here in Florida, so it's worked well. And basically you can just hang everything and the dual benefit of hang drying them, not only does it prolong the life, it also helps to bleach and sanitize and disinfect your diapers. So if you're having any stubborn, difficult stains, try laying it in the sun and it will actually bleach out those stains very efficiently. While this is a slight upfront investment, these diapers can last you years and years if you take care of them properly and you definitely save hundreds if not thousands of dollars in the long run. I'm actually glad that I'm doing this video now because to be honest, Liv has kind of potty trained herself. She has watched Max go to the bathroom and she has basically done the same this past couple of weeks. She places her little potty seat onto the toilet seat and goes to the bathroom, wipes, flushes, closes the lid, and then I come and help her wash her hands. It's pretty adorable. We might be phasing out the cloth diapers in the coming weeks and getting into the training pants, which Charlie Banana also has. I should note another thing with cloth diapering that really helped me out is understanding that you don't have to be all in 100%. This is kind of the theme of this Crunchy Mama video. You don't have to do it 100% of the time in order to do it. All right, you guys, so hopefully this video was helpful to you. Just remember that you don't have to go 100%, whether it's gardening or eating plant-based or cloth diapering or homeschooling. Focus on just getting your toes wet and giving it a try and then you can progress slowly and gradually over time until you find that point where it's like, this is comfortable, this is not comfortable. Just find that place where you feel comfortable and also feel like you're doing something better for yourself, for your kids, for the planet, for your body. 
and so on and so forth. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and join the Eat Move Rest fam and leave me some love in the comments below. Also share your cloth diapering tips and tricks with me and everybody else as well. Let's get a conversation going because I love learning from you guys down there in the comments. I know that our friends and followers do as well. If you wanna check out Charlie Banana Cloth Diapers, be sure to click the link below in the description. There's a special discount waiting there for you as well. And be sure to grab our Eat Move Rest meal planner and recipe app available on Google Play and the App Store. Until next time, eat, move, rest, your best. Bye guys. There are three things we all do every day and we could all be doing them better. Eat, move, and rest. We're Dusty, Aaron, Max, Olivia, and Bo, and we're the Stanzix. We aspire to live a plant-centric, faith-forward, healthy lifestyle and welcome all of the adventures that accompany it. Join us every week as we blend, chop, juice, run, lift, ride, and master our minds in between on the ultimate quest to find better balance, deeper connection, and true happiness within.